if you don't know who you are, nobody will know you. Two of us. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? If you don't know who you are, nobody will do what? Huh? It is knowing yourself that advertises you to your world. And Jonas, what did I say? Knowing yourself advertises you to your world. If you don't know yourself, nobody has the right to know you. In fact, they will abuse you. Praise God. If you don't know yourself, you will be abused. You will be molested. If you don't know yourself, you will be exploited. Daniel 11 32, they that do know their God, they will do what? They will be strong and they will do extra. They that do not know, knowing your God is knowing you, is knowing yourself. Because God is your source. Is that not so? So if you don't know yourself, just tweak it. They that do not that do not know their God, they will be what? What is opposite of strong now? And they will be what? They will be exploited. If you are not doing exploit, you will be what? You will be exploited. That is what is happening. What is being exploited? Let me break it down because of some of us here. It means that if you don't know the value of what you have, somebody else that knows the value will collect it from you. We steal it from you. Do you understand? That is being exploited. That means that you wish you you have you have used ignorance. Just like the case of uh, Jacob, who came in back right because of what? Because he does not know himself. By the time he knew, it was already too late. He was exploited. Who exploited him? His own brother. His own brother. People are watching you. The advantage you have today that you are not maximizing. Some people are looking for opportunity to make sure you live there and then they can take over. As we were praising God, the scripture came to my heart. And I have a strong feeling God wants us to do something about us. And this is urgent. Somebody needs to do a corrective action that is very urgent and it is still in line with what God is telling us to do so that we can urgently discover ourselves. Because if you continue to plow the wrong way, you will only be going further from your destination. You will only be going further if you are you will not get to where you are going on time. Many of us are still on the path that is taking us far away from where we are going. And until you retrace your step to the place where God cannot contact you, where you can have contact with God, you know that is where we are right now. That's what I've been teaching. A place where you can hear God. A point where you can you can clearly discern the voice of God. Where God can give you instruction. Where God can reveal yourself to you. I told you that getting to that point is not bread and butter. There are certain things that must be part of your life. There are certain virtues that you must possess that can bring God close to where you are. Psalm 91 verse 
God on that shadow. That is, there is a place where you meet with God that is that is not common, an uncommon place. That is, there is something that will attract God to you. There's something that God will see in you that will give him the comfort of a He said, this food belongs to children, but you are like it to a dog. Do you understand? This American woman, she he said, look, I cannot attend to you. So there are certain people that God cannot give attention to. Why? Because they are not in the right standing with God. They are not what? Right standing. Right standing. You cannot, for instance, this and this is specific. You show that God is really, really thinking of some of you here. You cannot be a singer. You hold microphone, you sing, you play in the church. And there is no corresponding excellence in your academics. In your school, in your class, you are seen as someone who does not know the purpose of being in school. You are not doing well in school and you are singing. Something is wrong with your Christianity. Something is wrong with your mouth. And that is going to be having impact on your purpose. Because God cannot be in that life of yours. And it will not transcend to the things that you are doing. When God is in you, excellence must be in you. Praise God. You cannot be a savior in school and be claiming that you are a child of God. Does God fail? How can you score two over 40 in class and claim that you are an instrumentalist? Who are you working for? You need to check your heart. Something is not good with you. Have you considered Daniel and the three people guys? I say as for this Daniel, the spirit of excellence is in him. Have you considered Joseph? There's two doubts. You cannot be in this church and you are the problem of any organization where you are. You are in misfit. Check it. See the scripture. 
Philippians chapter 3 verse 7. Philippians 3 verse 7. But what things were gained to me? Let me read verse 8. Yes, doubtless. And I count all things but love for the excellency. Say excellency. Excellency. Of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus, my Lord. The excellency. The excellency. Anything that is associated with Jesus must be excellent. If your life is not excellent, if you are not doing excellently, you need to check who you believe in. Particularly when it has become a major problem. Some people have been sacked from work, been driven out of school. The son of a bishop, the son of a pastor, with your life. How can God hear you? How can God talk to you? When you are not understood that in Him is excellence, you must have excellency in character. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 8. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Well, you just go to work and start giving excuses. Flimsy excuses. And sick, and that, and that, and this. And that's why I'm late, and that's why I'm this. Your work cannot be seen as excellent. If there are no great people in your place of work, before they even consider you, it is the last. And you say that you are a member of God's power Christian mission. You are a disgrace. Truth must be in your life.
you live? Is it the time that people wonder if you even know Jesus? All the age that is in the world, you can find it in your mouth. All the vulgar languages they are in your, on your lips. All the anger, all the negative things. Lovely. Imagine you don't know a thing and you are fighting your teacher. And you are hungry with your educator. You don't know it though. It's not as if you even know. To say that you know, you know, know it, that is why you are making chakra. You don't even know it. And you, and, and you, you are still boastful on zero. Right. But she has a, a heart to learn. She has a open heart. But the person look at you and just write you off and, and erase you. Say this one, she can't even. And you are a Christian, you are a child of God. And somebody just look at you and just write you off by the display of negative character. Somebody should look at you and say, "Who church are you going? I like the standard of life you are living. I want to emulate." Power child and are scoring two over 40. Scoring zero. Check your life. Whatsoever things are one of good reports. The report about you is always negative, constant. Anytime your boss wants a bad news, let him come to your office. Anytime you want to see frustration, you know that the moment she encounters you, the work has started. You have given your boss enough work to do, or the auditor. But your class is enough to write his report for the audit. He does not need to go any other place. Once you enter your class, all the findings can be done, can be deduced from there. And they can just finish the school. From only your class, you know, not, not plenty worker. You are not the kind of people that only will be looking for what to even write. I'm be begging you, please, is there something that uh, we need to improve on that you know? Because you can't even find any fault in you. The king looked at Daniel and looked at Daniel and said, This man, I, mean, I can't see anything wrong with you. These people misled me. And after Daniel was thrown into the, the lion's den, king went in and started playing for Daniel. The king that threw him, he said he had made a mistake. He started praying for Daniel. He was the first to discover that Daniel was not eaten by the lion. He said, Daniel, Daniel, your, your God whom you serve, did he deliver you from the lion's death, from the mouth of the lion? Excellency of character. Good report. Whatever things are of good report. When negative is always flowing from your address.
living that kind of life. God is a pure God. Your life must align with Him before He can dwell in your place. Whatsoever things are of good report. What is your report? What is the report from your quarter? Your quarter, what, are, what, is, what, is, what is coming out from your jurisdiction? Is it something that, that praises the name of God? Or that merits? When people see you, they look at you and say, and you are sure that your mother is a pastor. When people begin to question your integrity and question your salvation, something is wrong with you. Are you really, really sure? Go and check it. Stop all this. Show me, show me pastors. Go and sit down and explain your own life. You can assess your life, how you are doing. You can ask people to give you honest report of yourself. What do you really think I'm doing well? What do you really think I'm not doing well with? You can carry out self-assessment on yourself. Whatsoever things are of good report, those are the places where God says, oh, what I'm telling you, they are the things that qualifies you to assess the secrets of the Lord. I told you your life, the secret of your life, your purpose is a secret, is a code. Is a word. You need to decode it. You need to find it. You need to discover it. You need to uncover it. And what I'm telling you are the keys that can help you gain access to the place where you can uncover, where you can hear God. Good report. When they say they want to, you need a guarantor or a referee. Everywhere you go, nobody can stand for you. Nobody can stand for you. Your pastor will say, ah, sister, I'm a pastor, I, I, this is not uh, my area. Your pastor has used style to tell you, Sister, I cannot guarantee your character. Some of you that come and give me a character song to feel for you. I'm sorry, I will tell you. Me, I know you know their life. I tell you, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't guarantee you. You will mess me up. You will disgrace me. I cannot sign, put my hand, and tell you that I know you. That you will go and represent me well there. You can't. I can't sign for you. Some of you. I, no, I can't. If that we annoy you and you pack your bag and leave this church, I will say praise God for you. If there be any virtue that this, anytime they are talking good of people, Remembers you. Anytime, occasion, warrants your name to be called. Then, what they hear is something good and pleasant. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, did you see that? If there be any praise, if they are praising at all, your name must come out to the list. Praise God. Your name must what? Then think 
on these things. Dwell on these things. Meditate on these things. Let this thing be your watchword. Let this mind be in you. What are the things? The things that I want to mention them. Yeah, yeah. The things that are true from the beginning. The things that are honest. The things that are just. That are what? Pure. That are what? Yeah. Lovely. That are what? Yeah. A good report. And if there are any of that thing that needs to be done well, any virtue that is whatever you are expected to do in school, in class, in your office, at home, in church, in your family, by your husband, by your wife, anything that should be of a good report. That should, that is any, if there be any virtue, if there is any good thing that you need to do, but time by time, as wherever, let it be found that you are doing that thing. Let it be that you are what? Doing it. You are not the kind of Christian that your landlord is praying God that you will leave his house. Some of you cannot, your landlord cannot remember you and and and. I want to be a Christian. He said, all these Christians that used to hold house rent. All these Christians that cannot pay house rent. You will go so they, your landlord will nearly go mad. Good report. Some of you, your own is well, you will pay, but the house, we know, we entered one house with my brother. My mother, because the whole wall is punctured, you would think they have spread bullet on the wall. Somebody used that house, and I'm sure they will be a Christian. Because it is not the house. They have left it like whoever knows it should, should go to that. And you want to build your own house. How? <laughs> How? When you cannot manage another person's own well, how can God commit yours to you? How? May God help you in the name of Jesus. May God help us in the name of Jesus. I pray that this thing you have heard and learned tonight will be useful to your lives. Amen. That's what Apostle Paul prayed in verse 9. He said, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. And what did Isaiah say? I think Isaiah chapter 12. He said, in quietness and in gentleness, you will hear a voice saying to you, this is the way, walk in it. When the peace, when you have done all these things, the peace of God will now do what? Reign in your heart. And when the peace of God is reigning in your heart, then you can hear God. Then you will hear a still voice. The way walk in it, but when your life is minus these virtues, how then do you have the peace of God? You are having the challenges with your boss, they are wishing that they have a replacement for you. You are having challenges with all your educators, they just wish they have better students than you are. You are having problem with your pastor. Your pastor is just praying for a better member than you are. Hey, how can peace be in your life when you are a problem everywhere you go? And without peace, how can you have God dwell in your life? And 
is complicated. God is a God of order. He doesn't stay in a noisy place. When your life is having issues, you're having issues with your husband, you're having more with your friend, you're having another one with your mother, another one with your father, only you, you're having issues with neighbor A, B, C, and E, only you, you're having issues with your landlord, you again, you have issues in your class, you have with the parents, you have with your teacher, you alone, how can you have peace, you are dying. Your life is full of chaos. You need light. And here is the light. The world. When God saw chaos on earth, the first thing he did was to ask what? Light to come. Is that not? Genesis chapter 1. And he said in the beginning was the world and the world was with God and the world was God. And he says, and the and let me let me read that, that and say and the light shines in darkness. That's verse three, but verse two, John chapter one. Open your Bible there, because I'll close on that note. So that I'll just to establish the fact to you that the world is light. He said the same was in the beginning with God. That's verse two. were made by him. Now without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. In verse 10 he said that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Praise God. Praise God. The world is light. Just as light displaced darkness in the beginning. So I pray for you tonight that every negative character will be displaced.